told you don't be calling me. I'm in an apartment with Pale. Hold on. Hey, man, this your boy Tobias Tate. Yeah, I'm in this motherfucker, man. With my dog Pale. We in the apartment. Yeah, that way. Hey, Pale. Meet me at the apartment. <laughs> Yo, we back. It's your boy Pale. We in the apartment with Pale. Meet me in the apartments. Listen, nigga, when I tell y'all, dog, like, all the phone calls, all the people been emailing me, hitting my DM, you know what I'm saying? The stories that niggas been sharing with me, the shit I been hearing, especially about my city of Atlanta, it's really heartwarming because a lot of this shit is shit that I know and there's a lot of this shit that I didn't know. And I'm really fronting motherfuckers, so I know if it's some shit that I don't know, I know it's some shit a lot of people don't know. And I always just say, like, Atlanta been too popping for the last 20 years for people not to really know the makeup of our city, how it is, the nigga who contributed to doing this shit, you know what I'm saying? And and, and and the stories about them motherfucker. And I really be feeling like with all this new shit going on, like the shit that really made us to what we is right now is being drowned out. So it's always a it's always a pleasure when I have people who don't really seen the grind of the city since the two let me say since the two thousands. Let me say that. So so everybody can put a perspective on what I'm talking about. Since the two thousands. You see what I'm saying? And um my next guest on that motherfucker. Done been that motherfucker moving around, all the clubs, doing this thing with the music shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, see, I'm explaining it to y'all. Back in early 2000s in Atlanta, it was Monday you went here, Tuesday you went here, Wednesday you went here, Thursday you went here, Friday you can go here to here, Saturday you can go to here to here, after then it's the after hour here or here, Sunday you can go here, 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 and then it's the after party here or here. And every fucking day, nigga went to the club. Like, literally. And this is one of the faces that I seen every time I was out. And then you got to understand, it's an underground in Atlanta, it's a mid-level, and it's a bougie. All right? The mid-level is the clubs that the niggas who don't want to feel bougie go to. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, you know, your buckhead, your bougie, your super bougie clubs. Then you got the the, the, like your crucials and your and your chit chats, you know what I'm saying? And then you had your yards and you know what I'm saying? And throughout all this shit, I always seen homie in that motherfucker, right? In these spots. And it used to be some of these spots, I used to be like, man, what the hell they nigga doing in that motherfucker? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause like, you don't see niggas move around like this. You know what I'm saying? So with further, you know what I'm saying, introduction, I'd like welcome my motherfucker homie, Tobias Tate to the fucking show. What's up, man? We in the park, man, with my fucking pot late, man. What you talking about, man? We in the motherfucking pot, man. We in the motherfucking pot, man, man. I'm happy to be here. Hey, my dog. Hey, what, first of all, I want to say congratulations on your sure. Space Jam play, man. Oh, yeah. You know real? what I'm saying? Congratulations, sure. dog. Appreciate you, know you man. Like, that big coming from you. Nah, that nigga that big, and you go to Space Jam. Yeah. Nigga, that's Space Jam. Hey, what you talking about? But listen, man, you, you need for it. Come on, bro. Yeah. What it is. Yeah, French eye boy, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, French eye yeah, boy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I came up, I came up watching y'all, bro. So, for you to have me here, she, you talking about Space Jam? I'm in the apartment with Parlay. Yeah, you talking about, man? Now nah, it's a pleasure, dog. Like, you don't see the transformation of the city. You don't been around here doing your shit, working with producers, working with artists, uh -huh. with club promoters. Like, sure. you don't been around them motherfuckers. So, you don't see the change to this motherfucker. You don't see where we came from, how we got. It was already hard for Atlanta uh -huh. when Outkast and all of them and, and T.I. first came out. Because we was trying to make a way in the, in, the, in the music business that was ran by New York. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So it was hard for us to be accepted. You know what I'm saying? And then it seemed like once the door kind of opened up, here comes a slew of niggas. Bankhead niggas, east side niggas, and niggas. We got different sounds. Nigga, we ain't really rapping about it. We ain't got no lyrical. We just got down having fun doing what we doing. Right. And, and this shit just hit. You seen this shit when this shit changed when we went from from music side changing the culture with the music to Atlanta changing the culture with the fashion. You know what I'm saying? Hell because yeah. one thing I can fucking say, I don't give a damn what nobody can say, and you can argue with your mama. The <laughs> world didn't start it dressing skinny jeans and tight shirts and fitted clothes until after the shop boy dropped part like a rock star. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, was it niggas who were dressing like that? Facts. Was it niggas who dressing like that? Yes. It's a lot of niggas who been wearing European cut clothes. But that wasn't the style. It became a style after the shop boy draw. It was like white tee. Everybody wore fucking white tees. You've seen that shit in a life movie. But was it a style? No, it wasn't nah. a style until we made it a fucking style. 
You see what I'm saying? Then you seen this shit change to what we really just locked this shit down till now. Till now, then you start seeing Thug come out, all these other niggas come out. Then like to where we at now, to so the futures and shit. Like you don't seen the transformation. You no. don't seen niggas go from street niggas, trap niggas, to get money in the club with BMF and doing all this shit. Oh, yeah. So now these niggas is scammers. Now yeah. the street niggas is scammers. Now ain't no nigga ain't trapping no more for real. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, and I just feel like the city is too influential to the music business and to the culture for niggas not to really know our city. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the difference between east side niggas and west side niggas and south side niggas. Niggas need to know that it's really not the north side. Migos is from the north. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's north of Atlanta. It's, it's Gwinnett. Gwinnett. That's where they rip. Like, niggas need to understand because, you know, when these singers turns and people start coming out saying this and that, people don't understand. Niggas don't know. You know what I'm saying? East side niggas, them the flashy niggas. Them the, you know, the big boy, Car Cartier yeah. niggas, like gold teeth, like, you know what I'm saying? West side is in the slum. Like, niggas don't know this shit. And I just feel like it's because niggas ain't never explained this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into that topic. What I want to do with you is, before we do the interview, I always like to get to know the person behind the music sure. and the artistry sure. and, and, and the shit that you do. Because a lot of times people see the Instagram, they hear mm -hmm. the songs, they see you out, and people never really understand the person who is behind the music. And nine times out of ten, they two different people. Yeah, so you see what I'm saying? No, nah, man, not, not not two different people, but the artist is usually different from the yeah. perception that the world sees. Yes, you see yeah. what I'm saying? It's always a difference. And the more that you can get understand the person, the more you understand his music, you understand his moves, you understand mm -hmm. why he do this, and then I think that helps more people more become fans of you instead of your music. And if if they become a fan of you, then they're gonna like your music because they're gonna be relatable. Yeah. So in the problem with Pale, I like to get to know the person. So let's start back to where you from, yeah. you know what I'm saying, um, where you was raised at, and your influences that you seen as you were growing up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Man, you know, Tobias said came from uh, Montgomery, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? I've been, in, I've been in Atlanta half of my damn life, though. You feel me? Right after college. I mean, right after high school, I came to the age, started playing ball and shit. You know what I'm saying? I was so – I was always doing music, you know what I'm saying? So after I got tired of basketball, I just went on straight to the music. I was in the A. I was like, shit, I'm finna mingle. So, you know, if you can make it in Atlanta, you can make it anywhere in the world. A nigga in Atlanta sold me a flyer. Nigga said it was a park at DK. I came back, my car was towed. Nah, so yeah, hold on. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> boom. Give it to her, boom. You coming so, in, motherfucker. What year was it? Do you remember? Man, it was, man, it was, it was 2002. 2002. Okay, boom. What, you remember what club was it? You no, know, I was downtown. I would crawl from uh, goddamn. Walters. Okay, boom. In the parking lot. Yeah. With okay. the park. Yeah. So they gave me a fly. Hey, y'all. You par right here, it's gonna be a goddamn. You good. Put this in your dad. I done gave that nigga twenty dollars, you know, back then, like shit. And I was a college student. I went in the streets shit. Yeah, it's like, $20. That's a, $20. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, okay. Man, I came back, my shit was told. Damn. Out of here. Yeah. So shit. You know, Atlanta, you gotta grow up fast in the A. Hey, you talking about? You feel me? It ain't sweet, mother think Atlanta. This ain't sweet, bro. This ain't what it is. Especially not when the area I came, two thousand. Mm -hmm. It ain't went like that. You feel me? Facts, facts. So, so what what um what part of um what side of town you from down there? I'm from the west side. From the west side. Yeah. Right, how, is, how is Montgomery brought up? Like, cause the reason I ask is mm -hmm. I be wanting to know cities. And I be yeah. wanting to know how they made. So okay. when niggas talk and they sound from here, I can relate. But like, okay. I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a lot of poverty. It's a lot of um, crabs in the bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. I mean, niggas think Alabama niggas slow hell. Now I'm niggas that country and they're key. They're wild. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel more safer here because, you know, when you go. If you go to New York, you go anywhere, you're going to feel safe because you don't know it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can't hear. Shit, shit went sweet here. So, you know, I took my ass on up to the real north side up there. Like, yeah. Not the real, I went to Marietta. So yeah. where I yeah. felt, you know, away from the bullshit, you know, comfort. So That's the north right there. Yeah. If, a nigga yeah, said, yeah. if a nigga said, I'm from the north side, first yeah. thing in my mind going to say, nigga, you from Marietta. Yeah. So, you know, Marietta, like, you know, you ain't got them coming out of that bullshit. But I stayed on old net. I stayed on old net. Goddamn. Morrow, I just stayed, shit, Riverdale, all my family from here. Mm -hmm. So, shit, nigga, I've been in the trenches. I've been everywhere around the bitch. East Side, Cato, shit. Hey, 20 years, won't tell you one. I'm going to tell you one thing Atlanta do. I don't, listen, I don't argue with your mama. If you ever move to Atlanta, you ain't got to be from here. If you stay here for a long period of time, you're going to move four, five, six, seven times. I don't give a damn what you say. 
Everybody, is, I, I think that's just an Atlanta thing. I don't know why. Yeah. A lot of people say everybody from the hood do that, but nigga come to Atlanta and stay everywhere. Everywhere. I'm here for a year or two. Hey, now I'm finna move. I'm gonna go on this side of town. You know what? Now I'm chilling over here on the south side. So now I'm finna get a spot on the south side. That's just part of Like, that's just like, but being from out of town, when you come to Atlanta, you want to experience them places. You know what I'm saying? You hear so much about them growing up. You know what I mean? I, I used to come up here when I was 12, staying at Riverdale with my auntie and them. So all I could remember is the houses, how the houses were built. How the goddamn how Bankhead was. I used to be everywhere, bro. Like my boy got the shop K and K off of um off Bankhead. I know you something about Soul Food spot. Yep. So I used to build it all the time. Soul food. Shout out to K and K right there by the blood. Fields, yep. That's my dog. The blood, we stand in the blood like shit, man. Atlanta, bro. Yeah, Something about this city, bro. I swear to God. So you say you were hooping? Yeah, I was hooping. I was at Southern Poly. I had signed with Florida State out of Juco. I went to Junior College. Mm-hmm. And then she graves one, how they supposed to be. So I just came here. I right, so so got so what what high school you went to down there? Uh, Carver. Carver. Yeah. All right, so you were fighting. You, I was cool. I was, I was yeah. I was all American high school. Like I was top. I was like top twenty at one point in the country. Oh, that was yeah. Right yeah. Who so, position you play? Point. Point. Yeah, yeah. Your tall lad played point. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I had that motherfucker. Oh shit, yeah. that's, that's all right right yeah, there. I didn't get to that rack, so shit. You know. Then I then I was always doing music. I've been doing music. You know, I was sound with with my folk. Um. But dirty with Pimp now. Mm-hmm. I was signed with them for a minute. Pimp the Gangster. Shout out yep, Pimp the Gangster. Shout out Pimp Gangster, man. And, uh, you know, part of the ways, but we still family. You know, I just put them on the phone right now. So, shit. You know, just, just kept going, man. Yeah, shout out to Boy Pimp. I'm going to tell you a crazy story about that Boy Pimp, right? I had them got down. I had them chest got locked up for the, uh, my bus in my studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember. Yeah, got, got all the money out of it. 160. Sweet shit, guns and shit. So, I go to jail, they lock me up. Boom. Breaking news everywhere. MTV, BT, they putting it up everywhere. As soon as I get out of fucking jail, people was like, boy, I got to have that nigga on the song. Yeah. I'm about, my first day out of jail, I go straight to the studio with Pimp, Pimp Cash him out. I think it's, I don't know, I, I don't, whatever it was, it, it was more than 10,000. Yeah. And I mean, Pimp Chest, like, it was like, nigga, here, nigga. Yeah. And we did the song, dog. That motherfucker was so goddamn hard. Oh. And I was, I, I was. I shot the video too, then. I, no, we didn't shoot the video. I start talking all kind of shit on my man and I'm like, you sure you want to say that? <laughs> I like, you, sure, you, you, you don't want to say that? Yeah. I'm like, fuck that shit. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would say that shit anyway, dog. But I, I, I never forget that because I, I looked up to them niggas too. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. fucking pimp and the gangster. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, when they were signed to Universal, right? Um, and I think we got signed to Universal right after then, like in 2004. We got signed to Universal. But I remember because. They were signed to the label. Yep. And I was like, I like them niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's, that, that, that's super special. So you you five coming out of high school, played point guard, boom. You went to a JUCO coming out of high school. Mm-hmm. What was the reason you went to JUCO? You didn't take your, you didn't take your high school shit serious? Nah. And all y'all kids, man, take that take that work serious, especially if if you want to get you a degree. You know what I'm saying? Want to go to college and change your life. But, um, I mean – I just did the scores, the ACT scores and stuff like that. You I know was gonna ask you what it was. Was it your test scores? I was, I was super. Was I was brilliant. I was a, I was a, I was a brilliant student. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, I did have ADD, attention deficit disorder. Like, you know, my attention span. When you do music, if I can go back to this day, I would have just wrapped all my work. That'd you know, we look. That'd have been. I'd have wrapped everything. And I, we would. If rappers go back to school and right we now, rap all our shit, we take this shit down and we would be right? the valedictorian. Yes. yes. Come on, bro. Man, we'll write books. They'll start doing fucking school. But they'll start teaching. Yeah. I'm going to teach your class. I'm going to teach this class. Like, I'm going to teach this lesson right here like Tobias. Yeah. This is the Tobias lesson plan thing. That's what I'm saying. That's my, that might be something they can do it now. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. That's in the vent. It's genius. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Right here in the apartment. That's tight shabby in the apartment. apartment. See? That's tight shabby in the fucking apartment, dog. You know what I'm saying? So it's the scores. Boom, make you go to the Juco. So you still just saying, I like the, fuck, I like the music, mm-hmm. but I, I really, I do really want to fucking hoop for real. Yeah, still. You know what so, I'm saying? So I got an offer from Southern Pilot. First of all, I turned them down when I got to Florida Style. Like I got, I had signed with Florida Style. I said, man, I ain't going no juke. I ain't going to NAIA. But then I had set out another year. I was like, man, do I still want to hoop? I still wanted to hoop. And what's what's better than going all popping? Everybody pop. Let me go to the A. Mm-hmm. I done moved to the A. You feel me? I'm meeting them. Everybody was up there. I was like, I'm finna go to the A. So I came to the A. And was still hooping and still partying at the same time and mixing. You know what I'm saying? So. Everybody I know now, I made a lot of plays with in the music business. I met way back then. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah, so, nah, nah, they, they were too hard. So they got your ass in the eight. They got Around me. That's, them motherfucking, you're moving yep. around, you're getting thing. together, you're doing your. You're doing your I, how was it? How hard was it to balance your 
your school and your and your and your, and your um, gameplay with being in this city and being in, and, and want to see all this shit. Because I, re- I really really ask you this because it's it was, I coach football and I know a lot of athletes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of athletes go to these big cities. Oh, you know great. what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to get them perspective on mental to have to try to you know what I'm saying to see what they can do and what yeah. not do. Well, in in um high school I was like I was like the um the prom king prince the homecoming king so I was used to the the women and the attention and playing ball I was you know I was ranked high so when you come to Atlanta man you're from Alabama so when you come to the A man shit different the women different the cars the hustle the finesse <laughs> all the different so yeah. you gotta adapt and it's like so I had a girlfriend shout out to Christopher. Had a girlfriend back then. I said, you know what? Shit, I'm gonna do this little dating thing. Like, shit, oh, they gonna be the one. Man, I co- I moved to Atlanta to go to school. I said, this ain't the one. <laughs> Yo, this ain't the one. I'll open the door. Oh, yeah, this ain't the one. He <laughs> you talking about man? This shit, ain't the. Get up here, got to send all the goddamn what? shit. Like, shit. Man, you said I'm saying Masika. I'm saying. Shit, I'm seeing Monica. I'm seeing, I'm seeing so many bad women just out. Just out every day, you just out just seeing this shit. I, I seen Isis, shout her from Isis. She was yeah. real BMF and stuff, but I ain't no talking to her later on in life, but it's like, man, I'm seeing all these girls used to be on TV that I used to look, see it in Alabama. Like, okay. And that's shouted from, oh, okay. Now it's time to, it's serious. Yeah. Hey, baby girl, uh, this ain't gonna work. So, um, we gonna we gonna be friends though. No, you called and told. Her. I called and told. Her. I, I kept it real. Okay, boom. Give me tell. Okay, give me. Let take the phone conversation. Boom. Let go. Yeah. Hey, baby. Um, uh, how you? You all right? I just got some good news and bad news. Which one of you first? <laughs> what you told her? Yeah. <laughs> what she good, say? The good news is I still love you. I'm always love you. Bad news is I don't want to cheat on you. So we just gonna we just gonna be the best of friends. And we cool, we cool. She went and got married, you feel me? You know, had a nice little family. That was a real, that was a real nigga shit. Yeah. That was a real I ain't want to cheat on her. I ain't no cheater, so. Nah, that was a real nigga shit. Nigga be like, fuck that shit, man. That you shit. about that motherfucker Lou not answering the phone. What? Or oh, you in Atlanta too. You <laughs> motherfucker shit. You already know, you already somebody already. Yeah. But I'm finna, what, nigga? What? This shit lit. I was at like, Georgia Tech. Boom. You went from Alabama State to Georgia Tech, dude. What you talking about? The Clark Atlanta. Oh, I was old. I went to Clark, Spam and all that around there. Uh-huh. Shit, man, it's a rap. A, what that, what that call that? Uh, the AUC. What? AUC. That motherfucker hit a little different. And that, that, yeah. and that bitch in the hood. That Walmart went right there. So a lot of stuff nah, went right there. A lot of None. shit went right there, dog. I, what was right there? It wasn't nothing right nothing there. Nothing right there. The barbershop right there. Yep. Shit, boy, went Izzy there. B was right there. And get what? Get what? Get what? Get what right there. What? The Mahomes. <laughs> The AUC more houses up too then more yeah, houses up yeah. too then. all that shit right there was lit the whole thing was lit. yeah yeah I'm just saying like the yeah. whole area right oh, there yeah. low the whole the whole area was lit West End though West End yeah. yeah yeah definitely definitely nah that nah that was that was, so that that was crazy here so boom did you end up finishing nah you know what um I ain't never finished I had after basketball I was done over there I was I was cool put me worked out with the Hawks my boy Joe Johnson had let me a workout set up I ain't even I ain't pursued. I just was like, I was yeah. tired of Atlanta had got a job. You. Yeah, Atlanta got me. Atlanta got you. I I never thought someone <laughs> would get me. Atlanta got me. Atlanta got you. A, when, when basketball came, a job, I was like, fuck it, man, I'm do the music. Mm-hmm. All right, so boom. When did you first start doing music? Like it, initially, age of twelve. I've been I've been doing music forever. Like Chris Cross came out. That's another thing. I'm in the city with Chris Cross and everything. <laughs> Y'all up here, man. Come on. So you know, yeah, I've been doing music forever, man. So you seen Chris Cross? How did Chris Cross at twelve make you want to rap? Made want to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Made want to jump. Like they just, they just, they just inspire me. Them being kids, and you know, like, oh, I could do this. They doing it, you know. So was it? Was it? Was it? You just started rapping first. Start, but so what was it? Karaoke? You just rap? No, I did. I did. I was in Louisiana, um, in Ella, in. Like sixth grade, I was just rapping, and um, they had like a little beauty pageant, home co- some type of pageant where the Miss Louisiana came to our school, and so it was packed up there. They say anybody got talent, I'm the first one to grab the mic, and I just I don't know what I said, I just went off. <laughs> then from there, in high school, I kid you not, my principal she was fine. Ninth grade year, I'm in back in Alabama. I'm from Louisiana back to Alabama. Man, listen, 
I grabbed a mic in front of the whole school. One time we had it, we had an auditorium. We had what is stuff for the football game? Everybody come to pet rally. Pet rally. Yeah. Man, I said, Miss Manat, I got you hot. Everybody in the school went, went crazy. crazy. Went crazy. Everybody to this day remember that, bro. What <laughs> God? They what said, she do? What she? Now nah, I still got a number. She about sixty. <laughs> I still got a number. I need to call her right now. <laughs> no, I take it out through that for the team. <laughs> for the memory. <laughs> Miss Manat. Miss Manat. I got, I you, got you hot. Boy, she in Charlotte right now, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Whole school went Whole crazy. Whole school went crazy. People still know that, bro. The next day I had to go apologize on the intercom, though. On the intercom. Okay, so okay, boy, okay. Take us in between the apology type, apologize on the intercom, and you saying that. Give us what happened in between. Oh, nothing but a lot of who raised and that's it. Like, okay. Then Coach Dennis did. Cause they, they, so who made you apologize? Coach Dennis made me apologize. He ain't really like nobody in my family for real. Yeah. He was just one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he made me apologize. Oh, you you need to go apologize. So I went apologize. She still to the day, she loved that stuff, bro. Like, come on. And I'm grown now. So you gotta so you gotta come to school, you had to grab that motherfucker <laughs> in the car in the morning. Right? In the morning. In the car, you gotta in go to the front. You gotta go to the front. <laughs> I had to go to the front. I had to walk in. Nigga, don't nobody like going in the front. No, but don't want to walk in the front. That's yeah. when I knew I was. This was yeah. yeah I was supposed to be doing it, bro. This is what I do. What you? What? How you feeling about that? You like, man, I ain't tripping on that shit. I'm gonna do this shit. I just did. I just went to. Remember not? I uh, like to apologize for whatever I said at the, at the thing. I wish I had a CD out then. I said, hey, y'all go download it, but <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Damn. So that that really got you into it. Yep. When was your um? First time you started writing and creating your own music? Um, when I went on, well, right before, well, way before Dirty, when I signed with Dirty, but like my senior year of high school, I really ain't write then, so I just used to be rapping. Mm -hmm. They were like, they, we used to be, me, Big Real, my boy Big Real, and, and Marco, and then we used to be like outside, my little cousin James and Grip, recipe, my best friend Charles, he died. We used to be outside of the high school before school started. Rapping in after school at the track camp. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So we just used to be rapping. I ain't never had no topics. They just said go out the top. Yeah, they should be rapping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the shit doing school, everybody want to yeah. rap. He, Every, he, nigga, everybody want to rap in school. Yeah. You might not want to take it for real, but you're going to have yeah. a freestyle battle. You're going to have, I mean, the freestyle yeah. thing. Nigga, your turn. Nigga, pad that bitch. Yeah. If you, even if you can't rap, you got to say one or two lines. Hey, your turn now, nigga, coming. Yeah. Don't come around here if you want to put no rap. Yep. You know what I'm saying? What was, what was that first moment that made you say that? You know what? I'm finna do this shit. This shit is really made for me. Besides the time in, in the office, because it's always that moment that makes you say, "I'm finna take this shit that yeah. fucking serious." What was that that moment that made you say, "I'm finna take music dead ass serious"? Um, when I was when I was working, I ain't gonna bullshit you. I was working at Lowe's mm -hmm. when I had when I was working at clocking in at Lowe's. This was after um basketball and everything. I was clocking in at Lowe's and um I had got hurt. Mm -hmm. I said, "Shit." I'm hurt. They tried to fire me. So she, yeah. I said, y'all trying to fire me. So, okay, cool. You know I got hurt helping that customer. So she, I sued that. Mm -hmm. When I sued them, I said, I ain't going back to work for nobody ever again. I got that bankroll, 20, 30, and put it right into my shit. I said, I ain't going back to work with nobody. And once I once I knew how it felt not to go clock in, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I, I could do this. You feel me? When I knew they was paying me, and I said, all I got to do is do this every day. Even if I go sell these amount of CDs a day, cool, that's gonna beat whatever they paying me. Mm -hmm. So, and I seen how people was reacting to it. People was, that's when Twitter and a lot of stuff came out. MySpace, people was like, oh, he cold. Who this nigga is? You know what I'm saying? That's when I knew, like, okay, I got something. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It was me and my manager, PJ, at the time. So, that's when I knew, okay, get the website, press up the t shirts, and you got something. You got something special. What year was this? It was like, um, it was like 2008. So the reason I be asking, I be wanting to understand, picture my mind, like what was going on at the time, what was new, mm -hmm. what was coming out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I know that time, niggas weren't really getting websites. Yeah. So yeah. niggas' mind wasn't on, on getting no websites. But my, my manager was so creative, I didn't understand it either, man. Until I seen it and like, oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? It it got to the point where I was like, okay, getting websites, you making money out there, let me go buy an Usher domain. The label doing it, Universal doing it, you know that. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all ain't running your website. Who running this site right here? So let me go buy Usher.com and go sell this shit back to Usher. Because I know he's super rich. Mm -hmm. He going to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yo, Usher, this 50000 Let me get that. Okay, that's all. I'm, that's it? No, give me 60 because I know you're going to pay for 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, that's that's that, that, that good thing. I wish I would know that game. Yeah. Like that, you know? yeah. I still would have been doing that. Yeah, y'all got your what? shit, nigga. I got you it's a about? business. Hey, nigga, hey, cash out, nigga. Yeah, they going to do it. I would love that. Oh, what? me? Oh, hell yeah. Baby, you can see me doing that right there. Got nigga <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah, nigga, I got your shit, your yes. shit, your shit, your you shit, your shit. You still can do it because people still. Me, nigga. They still. Yeah. yeah, nigga, what you Yeah, nigga, pull up, nigga. I got your shit. So, so what? Yeah, yeah. Man, give me shit, man. Whatever. I'm over here. I'm, I'm on. I'm on bankhead right yeah. now. Pull up, dog. Pull up. What you talking about? Yeah, and then oh man, yeah. way back then too. Oh, hell but yeah, they definitely would. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. That's, nah, that's that's it. That's hella game. So boom. Now you're doing the music shit. Now you got your shit flowing on. In your mind, as an artist, from being out of town, you're in Atlanta. You've been mm. here for a little bit. For a couple years uh -huh. now, what is your mind frame and mental on how to promo your music or how to network? Because it, it, it's different when you're not from here. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear your perspective on like what you were doing, what clubs was hot, what you were, you know what yeah. I'm saying? If you're doing open mics, if you pull up at shows, you know what I'm saying? Put in perspective for the people who are watching, like the mental your grind, um, what you feel like you need to do. Me and my cousin, uh, Bama, Bama, um, uh, from he, he staying old oh, net. Yeah, yeah, I had a little cousin. Bama. Yeah. Shout out to Bama. I had my uh my other little cousin, they was the twins, and we we used to go to Patchwork. You know, Patchwork was high as hell, but my cousin, them niggas was from here, so they was already hustling. They was younger than me, but they were making that bankroll, riding charges, all kinds of shit back then. That was big. Yeah. You feel me? But it was like, okay. I was watching y'all. I was seeing how everybody was moving around me, like, nigga, listen, if you ain't moving like this, you're gonna get left behind. So I started recording. I started listening to my shit. Like, oh, that ain't that mix ain't sound right. I was like, why they shit sound like this? Well, my shit. Where y'all record it? So I look at the back of the CDs. Mix and master Rodney Mills. I go get my shit mixed, master right. I go and see like how people promoting. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cash with the snack out. People with the flyers. Yeah, man. Shout out. Know, um, shout out. Yeah, man. Snacking out. Shout you know what I'm saying? Out, man. But it was it was Cash this mania, man. this type of promo that was that was. That was still popping back then. You feel what I'm saying? So you had to take all this into perspective. You see how, see what it costs. And Gucci, everybody was, you know, geez, everybody was just popping with they, with they mixtapes and everything. I seen how people was moving. And I want to be a part of it. So no matter what it took, I got around who I got to had to be around. You feel me? If Misha had to put me around whoever, I got, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cause a lot of people. Go to new go go to new cities or towns and be scared to mingle. Yeah, oh no. They be scared to go out. They be scared to reach out. They be scared to ask. They be scared to. Mm -hmm. They don't say nothing. They be around niggas and won't even say nothing. They be like, man, I was scared to say something. Like, you gotta shoot your shot, dog. Yeah, I I'm, I can't. I ain't come to play. You feel me? I ain't come to. I ain't. It ain't no feel. It's like, man, just do you. See, see, that's why. I, that's why I went in life at. You know what I'm saying? Because I always been me. You know what I'm saying? I don't smoke or drink. You know, I'd had some shots before and tried to smoke. It wasn't me. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, growing up, I didn't smoke or drink. So, I didn't come to this city to be like, okay, I'm going to do this and act like I'm doing this. No, I'm still going to be me. I'm a former athlete. You know what I'm saying? I, I got morals, bro. You feel me? So, that's just how I always carry myself. You know? The last time you hoop? Shit, I hooped the other day. I hooped today. I got a trainer now. Shout out to Rick. Really? You going to get what you going to get? No, I, no I'm going to get yeah, I'm forgetting this yeah, like you. Yeah. No, I be having any basketball tournaments. Y'all come play. I'm with it. I had about 30-something in the Floyd Mayweather tournament. Yeah. Celebrity. Yeah. I got busy. Hey, boy, y'all done fucked up. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, hey, Jabo, y'all done fucked up. I'm recruiting out this motherfucker. I'm on Basketball it. Basketball time, come on. I want to hear all this. Yeah. They already said I be cheating. I want to hear all this shit. I, I win all the tournament. I go to the championship every fucking thing we had. I'm in the championship. Me in there. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's going down, dog. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, because we got a um we got a tournament coming up. Um we do mental health events. Okay. And we I got a flag of four calls. What we do the flag football. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We got a one of the event coming I'll up. Play. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. yeah. We got one yeah, of the event yeah. coming up. We do the basketball, we call it Mind Over Matter. Okay. We do the um um uh, dodgeball, dodge uh -huh. depression. We should did the kickball, kicking depression. I want a kickball too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the pressure real. real. Paintball, softball, whatever. Yeah. Team RNU, we do it all. Paper, scissors, rocks, pitch a quarter. For sure. It don't even matter. Racing, push ups, you know, yeah. whatever you want to do, we with it. You feel me? Yeah, nah, yeah. but um, so boom. What was your first big song that you had success with? Um, well, I, had, I did the record on um, One More Shot. You probably heard that, but I. So what happened was, you know, my uncle already ran with with me, you know, so everybody was always connected. So when Blue got out of jail, shout out BML. When Blue got out of jail. 
I seen him at a gas station. I said, what's up, man? So we linked back up, gave him a new record. He rolled to it. Boom. Came into a little situation. Signed with Blue. And then we put out the one more shot. I initially wrote that record for Waka Flocka. I don't even drink or smoke. So internally, it wasn't going to work for me anyway. But, you know, it went to the masses. That's probably what the biggest song as far as people knew about me when I first came out. You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, yeah, one more shot. That was it. It was on 106. Mm-hmm. It was on the Countdown, MTV Jams. I did a whole tour with it. But it just, it, it really didn't feel like authentic. You, because nah, it what got me. you into writing, though? Man, I've been writing. For, I've been writing my whole life. Like, I mean, um, the reason I ask that because most niggas who write that I know like to use it for themselves. Yeah, no, I don't do that. I, I like to, I like to, I like to see people flourish. Like, you know, if I got a record, if I don't drink like that record I did, that one more shot, it would have been big for somebody else that really drank or smoked. Lil John could have used. It. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna just save all the records for myself. How you get the Spade Jam play, man? Um. So one of my good friends, um, like my little brother, Ivory Scott, mm-hmm. and um, he just hooked the play up, bro. And she it was in from there. He he like a hundred percent on the record. So, you know, like she he do the beat. We're going that be right together. That's what it was. No, no, that's not special, dog. You know what I'm saying? But you just see opportunities like yeah. that come about because like what I did a lot in my career was was just like, bro, you got number one single. How you say? You got no number one single. Like, yeah. All right. You know, like, That's humble. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, it's just really didn't. I didn't take it for what it was. Like these shits is special. Nigga, you been on spe- a Space Jam soundtrack, bro. You in the movie? Project. I mean, not that, just in the movie, that. but that's same. Yeah. Mine, yeah. I just yeah, soundtrack I means just you know anything in the score, scoring. Yeah. Goddamn, yeah. mean played in the movie. You know, as a kid, see, see, here's the thing with it, man. And I'm glad you said that. I appreciate that. First of all, I appreciate you having me again. But uh, it's like. We as people, man, like, like people, like we get back to depression. We put so much emphasis on like doing it and then going to the next. Like we don't even sit and enjoy, yes, enjoy, enjoy the moment, bro. We don't we don't live in the moment. Like yesterday over with, tomorrow may never come. We don't enjoy the moment, bro. Like I I really should have went and celebrated that Space Jam thing. Hell yeah, yeah. But I, I I didn't celebrate. I ain't even watched the movie yet, bro. People just send me clips like with your name and stuff. I ain't really, cause I didn't got so after love and hip hop, we'll touch that too. Definitely. I got so Definitely. I got so numb to stuff, bro. And it's like, damn, Tobias, just, you be moving so fast. My mama sent me a scripture today. She was, and it says like, take your time, like enjoy it now, like don't be rushing all the time. So even I, I was, I was, I was a little late here, but I almost missed the interview because, you know, what I'm saying I put my phone away and said, bro, I'm just, I'm gonna relax, take me a nap. I worked out today. Take me a nap. I'm glad you called me because I'm happy to be here. But man, sometimes we got to take our time for ourselves and just and really enjoy some of our, our accomplishments, bro. Mm-hmm. Cause we don't we get so caught up. You know, Atlanta hustle and bustle, so yep. people feel like, man, I go platinum. I gotta go platinum again. No, nah, bro, you can enjoy that platinum. Get back to the next week or something. Yeah, take a break from because mental health real, bro. Depression is real. Yeah, I've been really through fucked, it. Dog. I lost my best friend, Charles Griffin, bro. Like I lost him, bro. Like you know. And he said, people always feel like we got time. Like, we ain't got time to waste, bro. Sure don't. We ain't got time to waste, but pace yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And do what you love. What come from the heart, go to the heart. So you telling me something, bro? Like, since I've seen you, bro, like like you said, you went platinum. It wasn't none of you. That because, bro, your your spirit good, bro. Your soul, your soul pure, bro. Like, Respect. you ain't never, I ain't never seen you on no rah rah stuff unless somebody just. Somebody rah rah with somebody in your camp, you gonna get rah rah. You gonna be the leader. Like, okay, we gonna how we gonna, we gonna go that way. What which I wanna do with? Yeah. But he ain't coming. He ain't coming nobody with no problem. No, 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 no. We ain't coming. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? No, definitely. That's respect. That's respect. Yeah. Okay, boom. Cause we are gonna get in that. Now you said it. Let's roll on into it. Love and hip hop. Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, tell me how. <laughs> tell me how did that shit even come up? Like even like how did it, how did it how did it approach you? So, you know, I've been, you know, I used to converse, like me and Carly used to talk. And um, I talked to a couple of chicks on there before, you know what I'm saying, before I went on there. But um, Tokyo, that was my dog. We was in the studio. I was writing and, you know, we was just creating records. And um, the opportunity came and it was like, hey, yo. So, so, so it was like, you know, put it together. You feel me? Put that together. It was easy. Was, was the decision easy for you? Like, hell yeah. 
No, nah, I talked about? to my management. I talked to Herb and PJ, and they were like, bro, think about this before you do it. And I said, man, y'all, I just asking y'all, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> one said no, one said just think about it. I, was like, I don't know why I even asked y'all. I'm going to do it anyway. Hey, you talk about? But listen, I'm going to tell you this. Like, you could have one record in Atlanta or whatever. You, you could just be like, whatever. You could feel like whatever. Bro, when you on that TV, bro, and you watch that TV. Is. <laughs> I got to go back. You might need to turn into a TV show. Bro. I'm going back. Bro, I ain't nothing like that TV. I don't care what nobody say. Bro, I done walked in places just off of music, you know, on tour and stuff, and it been cool because I ain't want no A list or that. But that TV turned you into a A, B, C, whatever you want to be Dude, at the that, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that juice on that TV. Bro, I done walked in the mall and sh- out of town. Man, I stopped the whole mall, bro. I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. Boom. I just did a show. It was like 3,000 women the other day. Mm-hmm. They ain't even know I rap. They just knew me from TV, me and Shooter. That's it. That's Shout it. Shout that boy Shooter. I get that boy yeah. Shooter on that motherfucker. He going to call ASAP. You know what I'm saying? I get that boy Shooter on that motherfucker yeah. too, man. I, this, that's why I say, like, man, to be seeing, like, like this be like the authentic Atlanta shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas see that, like, niggas watch this shit and be like, man, this shit should be made on this. Like, bro, they be having niggas on these shows now. In Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta now, be having niggas. Now they got some real, they got like niggas. Yeah. Everybody talking about celebrities and yeah, niggas, 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 yeah. niggas, niggas, which is be, good. Yes, but that's why I say that's why I love this. City. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And that's why all these stores, like what's going on, how the city got built, all this shit. That's why all this shit got to come out. Cause this our city ain't no fucking yeah. way in the world that everything don't come through. This motherfucker got to be Atlanta based. Like we gotta get this shit back to that shit. Yeah, niggas who really help build this shit. Let's like you saying most of the shit niggas I do now, mm-hmm. the shit I. Relationships I create now and being the moves I'm making, it's yeah. niggas that I fucking met years way, ago. Years ago, dog. But P, them, them, them young, it, it's crazy, bro. Atlanta's so different because the young niggas ain't, it like, they don't really respect the big homo. See, a lot of the big the big dogs be hating on the little ones. So it's like, then, you know, they got all their money floating around. They ain't, but you get niggas some money, you see the real them come out. No, nah, in fact, these, these niggas scam on $50,000 and be like, I'm just finna go to Miami and I'm finna go throw $25,000 in the club. Like, yeah, what, what? you know what you could You know, back then, back then, we got a fifty. <laughs> that's two bricks. Yeah, that's bad. Back then, like nigga, whoa, what? nigga, I'm finna be a what, nigga? But I, don't, I ain't finna spend that. I I don't understand. Like back then, I want to get this. Okay, now I want to get one. Well, I just got one, one. but now I want to get two, two of them bitches. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not finna do both. nothing. I want to get me now. I want five yeah. of them motherfuckers. I just want to look at these bitches. Yeah, I don't even damn near. I just want to say, nigga, look at this shit. Now niggas, these niggas get their money, want to spend their money so fucking fast because they ain't been, they ain't been earned. Yeah, it, and that's why I think a lot of these young niggas got because a lot of this shit ain't been earned, and a lot of these niggas don't be here to tell them. I don't think a lot of the OGs hate. I think it's just the way they explain and try to teach these niggas is wrong. Yeah, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Because. All the bosses, all the big dogs, all the big homies was once them same young niggas. Agree. Hey, but don't be doing that shit, man. And the reason I, I see that because I reflect on a lot of shit. And I be like, what the fuck I was doing? I was doing nigga age. Niggas were telling me the same shit. Yeah. Probably you got a million dollar, bro. What the fuck is you out here doing this shit for, dog? I ain't hearing that goddamn shit, nigga. I remember this shit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So me trying to tell a young, another young nigga this shit and him telling me this, I can't be like, oh, nigga, you hard head. You listen, nigga, this, this. You the same, yeah. Only thing I can do is just keep telling that nigga that shit. Every time you see me, I'm telling this shit. Oh, I already know what nigga probably ain't finna fucking say. And then eventually when he get old enough or he go through experience, he gonna be like, you know what, I remember that shit. And hopefully. Or if he, he get old enough to. Exactly. Right, that's what I'm finna say. Uh, if he can learn a mistake, if he can learn from my mistakes or learn from somebody's mistakes, you know what not to go through. Yeah. But if a nigga don't never tell these niggas their mistakes and I always try to tell them what to do, that's the disconnection. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell a nigga to do with his money. I got a song called, can't tell him how to spend my money, nigga. Yeah, but you, you can't. But the thing is, you know, you know the sad part about that is you can't tell him, but boy, when you... <laughs> If they can spend that money and can't get it back. Oh, no, that's, that, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the worst thing. Ain't, or get used to living that lifestyle yeah. and they can't live it no more. Can't live it no more. See, that's what I think is the biggest everybody chasing. flaw yeah. right now. Yeah. Everybody chasing the look. That look. You know what I'm saying? Everybody chasing the look. Everybody wanting to get the chains and the clothes and the cars and this. Mm-hmm. 
Nigga, who gives a fuck about a ch- big old chain with your street name on it, nigga? Unless you're just saying, I want to have it because I always wanted to have this yeah. shit. And now I got a chance to have, have it. it. That's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know how many artists that we don't know got Cuban links and chains and Audemars and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Rolexes. Plain like, Jane, yeah. Who cares? Like, it ain't special to have no more. Yeah. Back then, when we were little, we see a nigga on TV. He got this big ass chain and watch. We know fucking good damn well. Ain't nobody that we know got this got shit. You see what I'm saying? Not every the niggas every. you don't know walking niggas got six chains, six yeah. chains on. It ain't special no more. It ain't impressive at all. Just chasing that shit. You you get on Instagram, boom. You fall down, you see this nigga. Boy, this nigga just got the new Lamborghini truck. That nigga ain't got that money. That's boy, he crazy. I don't have to pay for my thing. Yeah. Give me a Lambo truck. No, these niggas buying it for the girl. They tripping. That's it. And half of these niggas don't even buy it for the girls. Half of these niggas buy it for the niggas. Yeah. Off the shit. I'm gonna put off a stunt on these niggas. For what? You see what I'm saying? And I ain't. Say what? One thing about you. I don't give a fuck what you do. You gonna you gonna add the ladies. Oh yeah. Well you're gonna add the ladies, you know, bro. I gotta add the ladies. You gonna add the lady, dog. You know what I'm saying? The ladies you use it will work for you. Yeah. A lot of people don't say what? Mm, I'm looking up. I'm gonna stop it real quick. Yeah, yeah, I just and I um I just feel like they should take different communication. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say like the shit that you did, the shit you're experiencing right now, niggas gonna hear this shit and be inspired. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because take the stuff that you see on social media and apply it to the way it helps you. And if it don't help you, just let it be knowledge that you got. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I see how I shot it. Okay, that's, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? And y'all stop looking at other people's situation, engaging your situation on somebody else's situation because yeah. you don't know what somebody else did to receive the blessing that they got. Yeah. Just because this nigga start rapping, he only be rapping the month, he got a deal, doesn't mean that nigga, you gonna get a yeah. deal in the month too. It don't mean it's a good deal. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it don't mean that if you've been rapping for five, six, seven years and you don't seen 20 niggas get on, that it's over with for you. Yeah. Your path is your path. Just keep grinding. I don't had niggas doing music, been doing music, I know for 10, 15 years, and just now getting a deal, and just now getting real management. It's just now getting placements. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But what better time than now when it's a lot of time, different ways to make money off your off your music and off your brand. Yeah. And I ain't make no money off my music for a long time, bro. Mm-hmm. As I hit that TV, it took, man, I'll be honest with you. It took TV for me to really, really see some money in it. Like, even when I was on the road with Blue Num, I did a lot of promo stuff. So I ain't really see it. I was just promoting my name. Grinding, yeah. But when I hit that TV, shit. And that was like 2017, 2018. That shit was different. Man, that shit different. I'm you still about, getting paid off this shit, man. On oh, TV, nigga. On <laughs> oh, oh, TV. Yeah, you playing. Yeah. And I'm finna shoot another one. For real, finna shoot another one. Shoot my own shit, yo. My well. Yeah. Shit, my well, roll back. Use it. Yeah. Fuck all that shit. Mm-hmm. What uh what projects or what uh music you got right now? Um, I just did a movie called 602. Um, Netflix about to pick it up. We negotiate right now, but um 602. Um, I got, I got Calm Over Heartbreaker. Mm-hmm. Um Man, I did so many projects. You know, I'm writing for everybody's shit. Writing on everybody's stuff. Uh, worked on, I got a big boy with Trey t- Songs. Tell them some more songs that you don't write for some more people. So just give them chits. Come tell you what, it's going to be some niggas who watch this shit who uh. not going to really know you. It's going to oh, yeah. be some niggas who watch this shit who going to know you. It's going to be niggas who watch this shit who's a fan of yours. Oh, yeah. And, it, and then, it, But you tell them they're going to be like, like the verses. You be like, oh, shit, but I ain't know that nigga wrote that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, God damn, I ain't know that nigga wrote that motherfucker. So I like to keep people fresh, mm. you know what I'm saying? On just your work so people can dive into your old shit, yeah. figure that shit out too. Man, I got so many. I did a lot of work with Kiki Wide, um she Gucci, uh Trey Songs, who else on uh, Ty Dollar. Mm-hmm. Um it's a new kid out. Man, so many. Um I got a lot of NDAs who you know what I'm saying? I can't yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, man. We, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, pen work ain't what it's supposed to be, you feel me? But um, it's cool. That's understandable. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the game. Yeah. Get yours. And I, and, and, I, and I for sure made a lot of plays like with, so if you producers and, and writers need some regular, you might have a dope song that you can't get to who you need to get it to. I'm going to get it to who I got to get it to, and we going to buzz bread like that. You feel me? Because ain't that free in here. You yeah, know no. what I'm saying? Ain't that free, but yeah, no. we going to make the plays like. Yeah, anybody should pay for opportunity. Yeah. For sure. It's not a price on opportunity. Though. Exactly. It ain't the price on opportunity. Opportunity don't come with yeah. a price. If somebody can turn you, if somebody can turn you on to the plug, mm-hmm. don't ask a nigga how much you're gonna charge me. Ask a nigga what you want. Exactly. That real. 
You know what I'm saying? Those are gonna charge me how much you want. They're real. You know what I'm saying? Because you pick the opportunity, the money you're gonna make from the opportunity is gonna be yep. much bigger than what you need to get this nigga right here. And that be yep. people's problem. You see what I'm saying? Stop worrying about what a nigga making and yep. see the opportunity from that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Nigga turn, you oh you got a nigga with a cow? How much you want for the cow? Okay. Okay, boom. You what want you that want? for the cow? Boom. Now I'm gonna take the cow from me some I'm gonna make some milk, milk some cheese. cheese. <laughs> nigga, I'm definitely make all kind yeah. of goddamn have some babies, yeah. have some hamburgers, some steaks, nigga, some filet mignons, nigga. Yeah. We finna turn this shit into something. You but we need them. The yeah. playmaker, you, you got to be a playmaker here, though. Nah, in Atlanta. In Atlanta. That's the, that's the biggest move is being a playmaker being in Atlanta. A play, that's it. That's the key. That's how you survive. Yeah. You survive that's everything. True. You survive all the all of it. being a playmaker. I don't give a fuck what your rent is. Hey, you can go for goddamn. You the right playmaker. Yeah, yeah. You can go for goddamn. Going home bank and goddamn. Bankhead the bucket. Yeah. Bankhead the bucket. Bankhead motherfucking bucket. Yeah, you ain't about. been the bankhead the bucket, but you ain't in line. But you ain't went down that road and then ride that motherfucker over there by Northside Drive. Goddamn, go across that bridge. Come you on, turn man. up. Hey, you nah, you, you, you ain't been nowhere, man. No, you ain't been nowhere. You got to make some plays and move, man. So I want to say appreciate you for taking your time out, yeah. dog, pulling up on me, sharing this shit. We definitely going to do it again. Cause I know it's a still a lot of start of shit that yeah. I want to touch on that we ain't touched on. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to goddamn get my viewers and everybody who's watching a chance to know the people who I'm having on here to get a chance to do their research. Cause niggas is finna. This is 2021. As soon as niggas see a nigga who don't know, <laughs> and he, doing the research. Well, it, they doing the research. Yeah. So it's gonna be some shit they gonna want to hear and see, and people gonna tap in. And we gonna mm -hmm. see the comments. And we're gonna do the motherfucking shit again. We definitely yeah. gonna get you back in the apartment, dog. Oh, yeah. So I want to say appreciate you for coming out. Yeah. And all, you know what I'm saying? Sharing this shit with us. Appreciate it, man. Time, dog. Yeah. Anything you want to say? Anything you want to hey, speak on? I just, I just want to. I just want to tell y'all, man. If you're doing music, stay true to your craft. Don't worry about what the next man doing. You know what I'm saying? Yesterday over with. Tomorrow may never come. Live in the moment. That's what it is. That way. Snagging out, cash. Well, come on, come on, uh, come on, snack. Come on, man. Come on up here real quick. Come on, man. Let's say what's up, man. Come on over to over to the camera over here in the apartment. Come over here. Come on, man. Come on, in right here. Come on, man. Promote your stuff. Go look at that camera right there. Tell them what it is. Come on, man. Right there. Come on, nephew. What you doing, man? Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, he ain't playing. Okay. Go ahead, look out. We're gonna get. He's four years old. And he's doing his thing right now. You know what I'm saying? He had a um, he had a um, a release party, and he got crowd. He brought he he got brought out crowd surfing in the in the in the BMW, on top of the crowd. You know what hey, I'm wait. saying? Definitely young talent. Definitely tapping in, man. It's what it is. We in the pop man. Where everything apartment. come through this thing, man. Stay everything. tuned, man. We in the pop man with Parlay. Meet me in the pop man.